Hey, I'm Michael Moore. I'm one of your elders here at First Presbyterian in Pascagoula, and today I'm going to be doing a quick devotional on a TULIP. Uh, TULIP is a mnemonic device for how we understand salvation as Reformed Christians. It explains how Christ's death applies to our lives and leads to salvation. So it's five letters, five parts to TULIP. Um, each one could probably be its own devotional, uh, but I'm just going to do an overview of all five. And they are, the T is total depravity. The second one is U, unconditional election. Third is L, limited atonement. Fourth is I, irresistible grace. And fifth is P, perseverance of the saints. So the first one, total depravity, is also called radical depravity. And what this means is that we're all dead in our sins. Uh, it doesn't mean that we're all born completely evil or bad. It just means that if we were left on our own, uh, we would never seek out Christ or salvation. Um, we would only seek to glorify ourselves. So that's sort of the baseline um, of where we all start. So the next letter is U, um, and that is for unconditional election. And this is one of the, this is probably the one that people struggle with the most. Uh, it's probably the most challenging part of TULIP. And this is basically predestination. Um, Unconditional election means that God chooses us without regard to our own acts or faith. That, that is, God makes His election according to His own pleasure. Uh, the, the initial reaction to this a lot of times is, well, that's not fair. Uh, but we all have to remember the baseline. We're all totally depraved and dead in our sins. So that God would elect any of us is really great news, and it shows His grace and mercy. Uh, you might also be wondering uh, or asking yourself, you know, I, I'm, I've given my life to Christ, but what if I'm not one of the elect? Well, what being elected or chosen means is that you're able to respond to the gospel in faith. So you can be assured that if you have accepted Christ in your life, it's because God has elected or chosen you and allowed you to respond in that way. The, the third letter is L, and this is limited atonement. And this ties back in with unconditional election. And this means that Christ's death was sufficient for all, but efficient only for the elect. And again, we have to go back to total depravity. You know, on our own, we would never choose Christ. Um, and so Christ's election is necessary to call us to Him. And when He does that, it makes our salvation certain. Um, it, in other words, Christ's death on the cross was not and will never be in vain. And so for the elect, His death results in certain salvation. <clears throat> the fourth letter, fourth part of TULIP is I, and that's irresistible grace. And this means that God's grace will always accomplish its purpose. And, you know, while we still possess free will um, when it comes to accepting Christ, uh, He's ultimately irresistible to those who have been called to Him. And the last part of TULIP, this last letter is P, and this is for perseverance of the saints. And this is truly great news, that once we're saved, we're always saved. And so for those who have been called and accepted Christ, God will never allow you to fall away. So I hope this helps you understand how, as Reformed Christians, we understand salvation. You know, in a nutshell, our salvation is according to His will, and it's only through His grace and sacrifice that we receive and accept it. All right, if you would pray with me. Dear Lord, you are so wonderful and amazing. We thank you for your grace and mercy that you show us. We ask that you guide us as we wrestle and try to understand these concepts and what your salvation means for us. In Christ's name we pray, amen.